Check 1714-54-7742. Train the muscles, not the joints. Nice, nice out here. Hey, wait, wait a second, what, what's this? Hey, look, some more advice from a YouTube expert. Stupid Comments Saturday on another day of the week. Welcome back to Natural Galant Bodybuilding, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about a subject that is widely misunderstood, like crazy misunderstood. It, it, it honestly, it boggles my mind how misunderstood this concept is. And, and that is the concept that you have to do full range of motion in order to gain strength. Now, the thing is, is that once you've gained strength, there can be a question of flexibility. Of course, I mean, if a person's not flexible, obviously they cannot move through a certain range of motion. Ah, oh, shit. I squatted too deep. I knew I should have been doing that full range of motion ass to the grass squat. I knew it. Now my number twos are messed up for the next month. No more number twos in the woods for me. That's it. But if you can move through a certain range of motion, if you gain strength in the partial rep area, it will transfer over to that other area as well, right? If, if a muscle can contract hard, if you stretch it a little bit more, there will still be a carryover of that strength. And a lot of people think that you have to do full range of motion in order to have any strength whatsoever. Like you cannot make strength gains if you're not doing full reps. So I'm gonna give you an example of this, okay? I wonder how the bears do it. Bears it. Oh, there you are. Ah, that's how it works. All of the top level strength people in the strength and conditioning sports and stuff use partial reps. They use partial reps for a few different reasons. One reason is to strengthen up a weak link through the range of motion. But they also do this in order to trick the nervous system so that it can fire harder, therefore contracting harder and lifting more weight. And this happens throughout the whole range of motion. Just like I talked about, if you do heavier partial squats, then that does transfer to a heavier full squat assuming you can do a full squat, it will carry over. Now, it might not be the same as doing full range squats all the time in your training, but a heavier partial rep will still help you in the full range. Now, as proof of this, I've been doing bench presses my whole life, or for a long time anyway, about an inch above the chest, but I can still lift heavy weight by touching my chest with a barbell. Now, if my strength never went up, I shouldn't be able to do 295 for reps by touching my chest. That should not be able to happen because people are saying, oh, that extra inch range of motion, you don't get strength in that extra inch of range of motion if you're only doing partial reps. But I have done partial reps and I have gained strength in my bench press through the full range of the rep. But as you can see, I've gained strength in the full range of the rep from doing partial reps. So. The big misunderstanding people have, is, it's again, it's just this obsessive compulsive disorder that people have around having to do a full rep. See, this thing doesn't go down all the way, but you know what, the muscles still work. And that's the one thing people don't understand. Just working a muscle and taking it right to failure is going to cause an adaptation. And people just obsess about whether it's full range or not, and oh, if it's full range, it's gonna work better. No, it's not. It's not gonna work better because basically what they're saying is that the normal movements that take place in nature, which are not full range, are not gonna cause adaptation of the body. But if you walk hills all day with a backpack on your back, you're gonna grow some legs and you're gonna grow a butt and you're gonna grow some calves. And that's not all range of motion that is equal to ass to the grass squats. Whee! They're so convinced that you have to do a full rep because there have been these fear mongers that have claim that you will reach eternal damnation if you do not do a full rep. It's all a bunch of crap, honestly. Absolute bullshit. If a full range of motion especially is injuring you or tweaking something or causing joint pain, that cannot be the answer to gaining strength, obviously, right? So the other thing is, is that the top strength coaches in the world wouldn't be doing partial reps so much if it was a detriment to overall strength. And you also have to remember that people that are in powerlifting that are doing heavy one rep singles and stuff like that, they're doing a lot of heavy partials in their movements. They put cinder blocks on their chest in order to do the top half of the bench press. They're doing partial ranges of motion when it comes down to squats. And then when they go to do the full range, a lot of times they're putting on a lifting suit, they're putting on knee wraps, or they're putting on a lifting shirt. And each has an immense amount of elasticity in them in order to push 
extra weight once they get down to the bottom part of the lift because then the elasticity becomes so tense that it puts anywhere from 40 to 100 pounds onto the lift depending on what lift we're talking about. So if partials didn't work, the top guys in the world would not be using partials as a part of their strength training. And at the same time, I would not have increased my one rep maxes in my full ranges of motion from doing partials, and I did. So that's, that's my testimonial to you, right? Don't be feared into doing certain types of techniques, especially if they're not right for you. Now, if you're doing the full range because you find it works better for you and you find that your joints feel good doing it and you find that uh, ass of the grass squats just feel great on your lower back and your knees, then by all means do it. That means you're built for it. So I'm not saying not to do something if it's the right thing for you, but don't tell me that you're doing deadlifts from the floor because that's the only way to put on strength because that's a massive amount of bullshit. Wait a second, wait a second. Is this even safe? Is this even safe? What? What I'm doing, I'm doing full ass the grass squat right now. And I did not train for this. I did not train for this. This is dangerous territory. I don't think I'm gonna have enough strength to get out of the bottom. Man, now I gotta walk home like this. It is just retarded. How am I gonna drive? And I've seen guys actually put on less strength by doing full reps in a lot of cases where they've had to overextend or overstretch themselves. And basically the stretch became the weak link and not the overall strength of the muscle. So here I am at Muscle Beach Harrison Hot Springs. Just a couple of body weight machines here. This machine doesn't go back far enough, so many of the exercise purists in the internet world would not like this because this machine is just not adjustable so that I can make it go back and dislocate my shoulders during the lift. So I know that's a big disappointment to most of the people on the internet. If you're not dislocating a shoulder, you're just not training properly. If you don't spontaneously die from the exercise, you have not pleased everyone on the internet. So locked out, see, locked out, down, locked out, down. Locked out. So there is a point of diminishing return in range of motion. If you go too extreme, it actually causes more problems and actually causes you to fight the inefficiency of the exercise instead of actually putting on overall raw strength. I saw this with guys that were doing deep squats, but they had to round their back in order to get down deep because the way they were built, it's not like they could keep their back flat no matter what they did. And they were fighting the squat so much that once it came down to putting any real weight on their shoulders, they couldn't do heavy partials. They couldn't do any extra weight. They weren't getting stronger. It was actually working against them. So it's actually counterproductive. So again, I stand by what I say, find the range of motion that feels right on your joints and on your body where you're hitting the muscles the most and you're not overstretching or twinging the joints and feeling all the pressure in the joint or the actual tendons at, at the insertion point, that's where you're feeling the pressure. You don't want that. You don't want to feel the pressure of the insertion points. You don't want the shoulders to pop out of the sockets in order for you to get that extra range on bench. And the funny thing is that people always say that, oh yeah, you're going to get less injuries from doing greater ranges of motion. Well, to what point? To what point are you talking about greater range of motion? I knew guys that were doing dumbbell benches all through the time I was in the gym competing and everything. And there was guys that always would go for that extra, yeah, that extra stretch. And they were always the guys that were coming to me and saying, Jason, what do I do? I've got a shoulder injury. My shoulders hurt me like crazy. What do I do about this? And I was always like, don't go so far down on your dumbbell presses. But they're like, oh, but that's the proper way to do it. I'm like, well, obviously not. If you're getting injured, it obviously is not the right way to do it because you're going beyond the muscle's capacity to be able to protect the joint capsule. So this is not rocket science, but people that are at elite levels in bodybuilding and lifting and kinesiology will be able to tell you this, but the people that aren't advanced or don't have experience will refute this because they don't quite understand how this whole strength and muscle thing works. So there is some validity to partial reps, no matter what anybody says, because the top people in the world all use it. So don't, don't believe the illusion that all the top guys don't use partial reps or constant tension reps. Uh, Sergio Olivia in bodybuilding, partial reps. Uh, Nasser El Somebody, partial reps, and he was a mass monster. All the bodybuilders use strategic range of motion in order to push the muscle group they want. It doesn't mean that they cannot do a full rep. They still will do a full rep in a warm up. They'll still do a full rep for different exercises if that's what they want to hit. So, say they're bench press and they want to do bench press for delts and they find that a full rep will hit delts, well, yeah, then they'll do the full rep because they want to hit their delts. But if they want to hit the chest, they're going to do the rep where they feel the tension on the chest and as much squeeze as possible, and then they're going to lower the weight again. It's all going to be relative depending on the goal, right? So there is no one way. And I always say this, but it's surprising to me how many times people just make stuff up to justify their religion they have around training. Hey man, your range of motion sucks. It looks like shit. 
So if you're gonna to listen to somebody, make sure, first of all, they have the results to back it up. Second of all, remember that each person is a little bit different. So yeah, sometimes a full rep for you in bench press might be the best way for you to hit that chest because that's the way you're built. Perhaps the tendon insertions and the way your structure is built and the joint ratios and everything is actually supporting that way of lifting for you. But that does not necessarily mean it automatically applies to everyone. Just because something works for you doesn't mean it works for everyone the exact same way. That's something that everybody forgets. Only the advanced guys, only the advanced people will know that this is an absolute truth. And there is a lot of advanced people out there who have way bigger pedigrees than I have and they are not saying this is the only way to do a rep. Don't fall for the exercise dogma because this is what's going to prevent you from finding your way and finding your way to getting the most gains. I knew a guy back in the day he would do ass to the grass squats all the time. Now I'm not saying ass to the grass squats are bad. Some people huge legs. I've seen some guys with ass to the grass squats huge legs. Then I've seen other guys doing ass to the grass squats and all they did was get lower back pain, knee pain and small little legs and their lift never went up. They never seemed to grow. Their legs always were like, almost like an ostrich. I mean, they're walking around like, I mean, some of the geese here actually have bigger legs. You have to basically work within the natural way that your body moves. Now, I'm not saying to work around tight muscles as far as you're just unflexible. Yes, gain in flexibility, but Understand that the way the forces play out in your body is extremely important if you want to get gains without wrecking your joints. If you take the wrong guy and you put him under the wrong range of motion for his body type, he will not get more flexible. He will just develop arthritis, labral tears, and ligament tears, and all sorts of other problems. Now, the other thing to say is that locking out at the top of any movement is, is not recommended. Locking the joints out. You can get away with it for a period of time until one day you cannot. Something snaps, something tears, and then that's it. You're done. Because why does jujitsu focus on tweaking ligaments and tendons when the joint is locked out? Well, because that's the easiest time it is to injure that area. And the bottom line is, is that the muscles are not protecting the joint at that time. If your arm is hyperextended, the muscles are no longer able to protect the joint properly. So this is the other reason why you do not want to hyperextend the joints. So it might look pretty on YouTube, might look pretty on Instagram, but you are putting more stress on the joints at the time. So yeah, what is proper range of motion? Proper range is relative and it's gonna be different for each person. So I, want, I don't wanna see any of you guys arguing amongst each other about what is the right range for somebody else and, and saying that, that the range that you found is right for them as well, because that's absolute BS, it's not true. And in some cases it might be true, but not all cases. So an open mind is how you're gonna get more results in this. And this is why I beat most of the people on stage in natural bodybuilding was because I was open to what worked for my body. And when something tweaked me, I said, okay, that cannot be the answer. I must try something different. This is where I'm different. I, I didn't follow the pack. You know, I wasn't like a little sheep, like just running around, just following everybody just for the sake of just, hopefully they'll, they'll accept me and hopefully I'm gonna be part of their, oh, here's a dog right now, see? He wants to be part of my pack. So that's the thing. I, don't do stuff just because you're looking for acceptance from other people. Do it because that's what works for your body. A lot of times people think that you have to do overextended range of motion or medium range of motion or partial range of motion and there's all these different techniques that people are misunderstanding around range of motion. People underestimate the fact that muscles adapt regardless of range of motion. Now one could argue that maybe it's more effective to do one range of motion as opposed to another in certain instances for certain purposes but the bottom line is that if you are doing 90 degrees of the elbow for curls and you're going to failure something has to adapt. Something is going to be pushed into adaptation from that. And that's the thing that you gotta remember. So first and foremost, find the range of motion that doesn't snap you. I mean, I just talked to a guy yesterday and he talked about how bench presses kill his shoulder, but I've watched him bench press and he always insists on touching his chest with the barbell. Now, if you're getting shoulder pain and you're touching your chest with the barbell and you continue to do it, well, that might be your fault while you're getting that injury, right? So you have to really look at how you're doing exercises and don't get too obsessed with doing it the right way. I know I talk about this all the time, but it's, it's really true. I see it with people all the time where they're saying, hey, I have to do the big three or I have to do this lift a certain way. I have to touch my chest with a bar or I have to overextend and chin up just to make sure it's a proper lift. And then they end up getting bursitis so they end up actually hurting themselves and then they can't train anymore. Make sure that if you're gonna train, yes, push the muscles to failure, push them as hard as you can. I 100% I, I embrace that. And you do wanna stretch them, but don't overstretch the joints just to make sure that you are hitting the proper form because that's obviously not the proper form for you if you're inflaming the area or hurting something. So somebody just asked me, can you build biceps by doing 90 degree dumbbell curls at the arm? And the truth is, yes, you can. You can build any muscle group by doing partial ranges. 
Now again, one could argue whether it's most effective, whether you're doing flexibility training along with it or not, but I would say yes, as long as you're hitting failure or you're pushing the muscle, it will be forced to adapt. And adaptation is what this game is all about. And your body will adapt 100% if you're pushing it. That's it. Just make sure you push it smart and push it in a way that you're not injuring it. Mountain. So I hope this helps you understand a very general principle in this training game. I hope this helps you understand that, yeah, you, you don't have to do something in a, in a certain way. You just need to push the muscle into failure and there it will adapt. Whether you're doing high reps, low reps, uh, any range of motion, there will be some adaptation that takes place. And one could argue that sometimes partial reps are more effective than the full rep. So anyway, I hope this helps you out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you need to get home, just go to naturalandbodybuilding.com. Mountain. Take care for now. Stupid Comments Saturday on another day of the week.